Hi there, and welcome back to Birding Today. I'm your host, Guillaume Durig. Now, last time on the show, we explored the dry hills surrounding Santiago, the capital of Chile. But this time, we're somewhere very different. We're in Australia. Specifically, we're in the Upper Murray, a region located in Australia's southeast. It's located on the Victorian and New South Wales state border, east of the Snowy Mountains, which are themselves part of the Great Divining Range, Australia's most extensive mountain range. The Upper Murray hosts a great diversity of flora and fauna and offers great birding opportunities. So let's jump right in. I'm at the Cancoban Pondage, a three kilometer long lake that forms part of the Snowy Mountains Hydro Scheme. From this boat ramp, Pacific black ducks are commonly seen out on the lake, whilst white-faced herons hunt for small fish in the shallows. This can also be a rewarding place to see raptors, such as this little eagle, who was perched high up a tree trying to regurgitate the remains of its last meal. So, those are masked lapwings flying across the water there. Beautiful bird. Quite a common species in open country. You know, you'll find them in paddocks, um, wetlands, coastal habitats. They're common throughout Australia. Lovely. So now we're going to have a look um, closer to the fields and see what we can find um, away from the water because obviously there are different birds where you have different habitat types, even if they're quite close together. So, let's go and have a look. Beautiful. So a group of about 20 to 30 strawneck ibis flying overhead. That's always good to see. Species of ibis. Um, the other common ibis is the Australian white ibis. But these are strawnecks because they have uh, dark wings and they like to, f to, to fly out in groups and forage in groups usually. So that's a good species to see. Lovely. And there's also a pair of wedge-tailed eagles which have just flown in and are circling above us here. It's a lovely, beautiful species, the wedge-tailed eagle. You can recognize it by the diamond shape um, of its tail or the wedge shape of its tail and even its sheer size is just an indication that it's a wedge-tailed eagle. Lovely. So it's just been flying up over the pondage here, um, looking out over its territory. Lovely. All right. And what we can hear there is the Australian raven, long wailing call. <coughs> Wailing call is an Australian raven, um, which is also a common bird. He's just sitting up. Drawn out. Lovely. Beautiful, a pair of whistling kites over there. Uh, quite a common raptor throughout Australia where the habitat's suitable, so open country, roadsides. Um, it's quite an adaptable species and it's got quite a special call that's quite easily recognizable, which is um, a sort of chattering high-pitched series of notes, um, which, which uh, you know, can be heard from quite far away. So, I've got some flame robins along this fence. A beautiful, beautiful species. Okay, I've got a really good shot of one here. I'll show you on screen now. It's a bit shaky because of the wind, but as you can see, the male is just a gem. Lovely bird, it's one of my favorite species. So, 
We're now going to head away from the pondage up into the forested slopes surrounding Cam Coban to see if we can find some different birds, which undoubtedly we will. So, see you there. Many of these forested slopes are actually located right on the western edge of the mighty Kosciuszko National Park, which protects a huge area of spectacular alpine habitats. The first bird I saw in the forest was this achingly beautiful male scarlet robin, a member of the Petroika family, the Australasian robins, just like the flame robin we saw down in the paddocks earlier. Both of these species are actually more easily seen during the winter months, as they move to more open habitats and lower elevations. The scarlet robin feeds primarily on insects. It patiently sits on a perch, swooping down to catch them when the moment is right. So, aside from the scarlet robin, there are many more species that we'll be able to see here. And it's actually winter right now. The winter solstice is just two days away. So most of the summer migrants have actually left for warmer reaches farther north. But these year-round residents that we're going to see here have a charm of their own. One such bird is the varied Satella, a nuthatch-like species that forages in groups mainly in the canopy looking for insects and other arthropods to feast on. This white-throated tree creeper does much the same thing, although it tends to prefer foraging alone, and in a more structured way. Mammalian life is around too. This red-necked wallaby has just emerged from the forest into a small clearing. The biosphere of the Upper Murray region extends considerably far into New South Wales. Places like Clark's Hill Nature Reserve are worth visiting, which is where I saw this dazzling rose robin, yet another member of the Petroika family. Manus Lake near Tumbarumba is another rewarding spot. This golden-headed sister cola was one of several I found in the vegetation surrounding the lake. Wow, another Wachtell eagle just flew it across. You can probably see it, can you? Just way out in the distance there. Just flew right over, right over the top of the hill. Well, my plan now was to hop over to Coryong, a nearby town. But something caught my eye along the roadside. Okay, I'm just gonna park on the side of the road here because there's a white-necked heron that's just that's just uh, on the shore of that little billabong here. And there's a magpie lark behind it. Before long, though, I had to push on, and I eventually got to Coryong. So I'm currently driving through the main street of Coryong, which is a small town in the Upper Murray with a population of about 1300, more or less. But the feathery residents of town are also about, so we're gonna go and have a look um, in the parks and gardens and if we can find any specialities of the Upper Murray in here. Indeed, as I've mentioned before in the series, birds are everywhere and country towns in the Upper Murray are no exception. White-plumed honey-eaters enjoy the rich abundance of garden flowers, probing for energy-packed nectar. Red-brown finches are not uncommon in the town's hedges and bushes. Here is a juvenile, lacking the adult's diagnostic red brow. 
And perhaps the most noticeable town resident is the Willy Wagtail, a familiar backyard bird across Australia. So we're right on the edge of town now, and in these paddocks behind me I've seen a variety of duck species. Here we have some Australian wood ducks just grazing at the edge of the pond here. I've also seen Pacific black ducks in this area, just behind me, which graze alongside the, the Australian wood ducks sometimes. And another great species I've seen in these paddocks is the Australian shell duck. Um, which is a big bulky shell duck, like all shell ducks, and the female has a white patch on her eye and the male has a jet black head, so that's a good field mark to, to distinguish the sexes. But they're, they're around here, so it's a, good, um, it's a good species to see around here if you ever, if you ever visit. Okay, next stop is the Koryong sewage ponds, um, which are on the other side of town. So let's hop in the car and, and have a look at what's over there. White-faced heron there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. I think nine great cormorants, one little black, and one little pied. Ah! Oh. Um, black-fronted dotterels. And red rum parrots. Lovely. Four of them. Another male flame robin, just on this wire up here. Oh, he's gone. So now we'll have a look over here. There's a hard head. One, two, three, four. Oh, and there's a pink eared duck. There's a pink eared duck. Two pink eared ducks. Oh. No, hang on. One, two, three, four pink eared ducks. Right, this is very good. I'm gonna try and get some good footage for you to have a look at them. Okay, that's very good. It's very good indeed. My excitement at seeing this species was not unjustified. The pink eared duck is very pretty indeed, with its bold black and white stripes, masked appearance, and strangely shaped bill, which it uses as a filter to feed on microscopic plants and animals. These hoary-headed grebes are preparing for a cold night ahead, as the sunlight rapidly fades. Well, this is where it ends for this episode, guys. So, with the pink-eared ducks and hardheads and hoary-headed grebes as the final touch, I'm going to end this episode. So, hope you enjoyed it, and um, hope to be making more of these episodes for you in the weeks and months and years to come so thanks for following me shout out to follow Thomas who has been very encouraging with my bird videos so um, thanks Thomas and I'll see you all in the next episode I'm Guillaume Durig see you soon bye